All right, here we go with some slivers action, and this is a keeper. It's got a bunch of lands and an aether vial, uh, so which is not it's not perfect for sure. Um, has you know the propensity to not do a ton as we square off against the turn one delver here, but on the plus side, uh, we have collected company, which makes up for a lot. Cavern of Souls as well. Uh, looks like it might be relevant against our Steam Vents Delver opponent. And there's a two drop. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and lead with. Now that we have a two drop, we're going to be casting. I guess I'll just lead with the Muta Vault. Hide our cavern for a turn, and there's no reason to uh, to do anything with the Watery Grave or anything like that. So it was a good draw for us. Now this game is going to be decided. I think a lot's going to come down to this flip right here. <clears throat> Did he get it? Uh, he's taking his time. The slow roll. Please no. Delver always flips against me. It's like blind flipping Delvers, man. That's how you. That's how you figure out if it's your turn. If it's your time to go to Vegas. And look at that, man. No blind flip Delver. We did it. All right. So. Bullet dodge for one turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bullet dodge for one turn at least. But there's the second one. Yuck. Does our opponent not have a second land, though? That would... Uh, well, he does. Okay, so... All hope dead. All hope gone. He'll get in get in at one for us, one tap, and play a Mana Weft Sliver. So, awkward here. We Without this Sliver, um, which I imagine is going to die, you know, I imagine he'll bolt it or something, but we actually can't cast Collected Company. Oh, nice. Okay. I'm actually going to lead with this. Now, this is real annoying if he has a spell snare here. Um, but he does not have mana leak or remand up. Now, it's possible I could have... You know, on the one, I could play the Mana Weft Sliver that turn with the Cavern so it can't get Spell Snared, and then Vial in the Spell Snared next turn. But that doesn't stop our Mana Weft Sliver from just getting bolted, and we really need it to cast Collected Company. So uh, we can make the Spell Snared eat the removal at the end of his next turn, flash in our Mana Weft, untap, and play Company. And on our next turn, we can play Necrotic Sliver, uncounterable. So basically, we just need him to not deal us a billion damage with Delver Secrets before we can get going here. Of course, that is the trick. So it appears to be on uh, Teamer colors, actually. I was expecting Grixis or just Blue-Red or something. We'll see. So, we dodged a... Okay. Uh, and he's drawn Dispel for our Collected Company, huh? Yeah, we might be dead. So, we lost the... Lost the Delver Lottery. Did not blind flip on turn one. However, blind flip two of them on turn two. Well, I guess it's turn three. Second opportunity to flip them. Uh, our Necrotic Sliver will take care of one later. Um, but that's really slow. We're going to take a lot of damage from that in the meantime. Lost the dice roll. Lost the Delver flip. So not winning any of the RNG this game. I don't suspect we're going to have the opportunity to even cast Collected Company. Now, Gale Rider's Sliver wouldn't be a bad one. Predatory Sliver, acceptable enough, I suppose. Um, okay. I don't know about this one. We're going to play it. It cannot be countered. Alright, so I might file in the Predatory Sliver at the end of the turn. We'll see. Um, because then we can file in the Mana West Sliver and any of our soldiers can tap for Mana to cast Collective Company. But as long as we know as this spell open, I'm not really dying to even do that. Yep, no text. Well, we're going to fall to 7 this turn, which honestly just might be dead. It might be bolt snap, bolt kill you. Um, if we untap, we can necrotic sliver. We can sacrifice a sliver to destroy one of the delvers, try to buy a turn. I don't know what we're hoping to draw, though. 
maybe, well, I guess Gale Rider Sliver would be ideal. Um, maybe Dark Heart Sliver. Gain some life. Siphon Sliver would be good. Uh, we could theoretically try to race. I am not confident, though. Now, see, the thing is, if he points a bolt at our Sliver, we have to redirect it to Spell Sky because we're not winning the game without Necrotic Sliver. Uh, at which point we're at 11, he knocks us down to 5, and then we're in that, you know, bolt snap bolt range, or just another double hit plus another bolt, so. We're working hard here, I just don't know if we're going to have quite enough time. He's got a full grip of cards over there, 5 cards with one of them being a dispel. Well, at least that we can attempt to block. Which I have to do, I mean... I mean, if he if he bolts this and then we well, can't even double bolt here, so we just have to call him on that one. I mean, I could have tried to block here and then vial in a predatory sliver, uh, but then like any spell wrecks us pretty hard. Now maybe he'll tap out here. It's unlikely, but you never know. Resolving Collective Company would be our way to get back in this. All right, we were not fortunate enough for that to happen. I see the predatory sliver in here. All right, so violin. Hmm, okay, so we can violin one. That's all we can do because we have to sack to destroy this. So uh, just go ahead and play this tapped. Um, I guess go ahead and get in there with this. There's no reason not to. I guess there's no reason not to get in there with both of them. This, I'm still making, you know, still have to make this call at any point, so at every point. Now, I don't think there's any benefit to doing this now, um, cracking for the Necrotic Sliver ability. Now, I guess I could have vialed in a Sliver, then tapped to play the other Sliver and still have that up. I guess that's true. It just probably doesn't matter, though, given when we would actually be able to use that mana. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and pass back. I don't want him. I don't want to try to kill it and then have him vapor snag um, his own Delver and get a replay it and etc. Uh, if that happens, I want to make him do it on his turn. Next turn, we get untap with Watery Grave open to redirect to Spell Sky and not have to pay life for it. See what he wants to do, though. All right, he just takes his turn. I don't know if that's good or bad for us. He didn't hit a land drop. We know he has a dispel. And I don't feel like we're winning, but... Theoretically, we only go to four on this hit and then can untap and kill this. Oh, there's the snag on our spell skite. That puts us to six. I accept. Sure. Spell Sky down. All right. So the good news, well, I guess Spell Sky up, really up to our hand. Um, the good news is they don't have to have summoning sickness, so we can just file in this mana weft, block, sack. Of course, if he's sitting on another bolt, that won't work. I mean, we could just file a spell Skype back in. I guess we'll just do that. <laughs> I mean, it put us to six. So that's probably his play here. I mean, maybe I don't want to... Uh, so we're just dead. He just... Okay. I suppose that that is true. Now we can block, we can kill one, and we die anyway. So, okay. I guess he was playing super safe there. You read the article about slow rolling, decided to slow roll us. Alright, Delver, let's get some lifelink in here. It's, uh, this is not bad. We can deal a little bit of damage to the Delvers early, as can the Warping Whales. For a minute, at least. I can also hit the, yeah, this is probably fine. All right, let's go ahead and start with this and see where we're at here. 
I think the sludge slivers are not insane. Um, honestly, the necrotic sliver is not that important either. I mean, it was our only out. I mean, maybe they are. The fusion sliver is very good. Um, harmonic sliver is not very good. Alright, so we have a bunch of two drops this game, which is fine. Uh, the dark heart is good. You know, the frenetics are sort of iffy if he goes for bolts or whatever, but I think that's fine. But we have collecting company so we don't get bolted out. You know, we we have the ability to to play that game. Now we'll go ahead and cut a uh, cut the one sentinel sliver here. It's probably not incredibly relevant. Alright, we'll give this a shot. I think this is probably a good configuration to go into game two with here. Alright, so I would like to play first. I'd like to keep this hand. This seems like a pretty recent. This actually seems really good, to be honest. We can uh, play. We're going to have to fetch out a Verdant Catacombs on turn two and shock ourselves. Which is, you know, sort of unfortunate. But uh, if we can land Diffusion Sliver, that's very, very important in this matchup. So this is actually good. It makes it. Okay, so yeah, it has to be in play first. So we can't vial this in response to a lightning bolt and counter the lightning bolt because it gives the ability to the creature. I believe. Maybe that's not true. That's how Kira works. I don't know if that's actually how this works. But it's becomes, and it's already the target at that point. Okay. So yes, this has to be in play first. Oh no. Well, that slows us down a little. He brought it in, punished us. Uh, it makes our hand worse, but it doesn't make our hand unplayable. Especially now that we had another land here. So we can fetch a watery grave uh, without fear on this first one. And yeah, we do have to hurt ourselves, but... Let's go ahead and get the protection down. Now we need green and white. I don't actually know that we have Temple Garden in our deck. We have Godless Shrine. I don't believe we have Temple Garden, so we may have to make a choice here. We'll see. I may just fetch the basic forest and attack with Mutavolt next turn along with the Gill Rider Sliver. Storm Chaser Mage, okay. Quite the blocker, as a matter of fact. Is he going to attack? Okay. I'll trade some damage. Oh, yuck. Oops. Okay, so let's go ahead and play the Gale Rider Sliver here. Give our guys flying. You know, I wonder if it's better to just cast the Sinu Slivers. I think it is. I think we can just race. I don't love taking damage and not being able to cast Cloud Company. Now we've drawn a second one. Uh, I think it's... It's much better because, also, look at the, the lands left in our deck. It's only three, um, well, it's three Mutavolts, four Sliver Hives that, in the Cavern. So there's a lot of cards that don't allow us to cast this, but we don't have another land anyways, whereas we do have two Slivers. So if we just get the Godless Shrine, we still have uh, the Forest, the two Overgrown Tombs, so that's three uh, plus the Vern. So we'll have four. we only have four outs to cast this with um, as it currently stands. That said, we can we with the protection and the flying and everything, we can possibly in two lords, we can very possibly win the game without ever drawing a green source to cast this. So I'm just gonna fetch the godless shrine here. And start the beatdown. So we crack back at him for two this turn, which is fine, but next turn we have twelve. <laughs> and if we hit a land of any sort, we uh, get to add in a mutavolt to that make it sixteen. So uh, you know, it doesn't look like much right now, but uh, with the land off the top, we get to cast this, activate this, all of a sudden we're attacking for, uh, it would be 9, 13. So, and if he shocks himself here, that'd be lethal, which he did. And we'll have the other, uh, the other Sinus Sliver in play as well. And he's got another Storm Chaser Mage, huh? Okay. Now that's interesting because I really don't want to. If he just chooses to block, oh, he's not going to. He's gonna. He's gonna try to race. I don't know. I don't know if racing is what he wants to do, but 
He's going to give it a shot. He can get at us for four, put us at nine. Next turn, he need like double bolt. Um, but even then, we have a blocker. Maybe he just gets in with one or something. Getting in with one. Now that he's tapped out, we don't have to worry about him triggering prowess on our turn unless he brought in gut shots for the blowout. Um, I think that we're pretty comfortable just throwing our guys at him. Yep, all right, he's gonna, he wants the race. I'm in. And if we hit a land, he's just dead. So here we go, moment of truth. Does the game end on this turn or not? It does. All right, so sweet. That was actually the sweetest one to draw. We could class, cast this collected company. We don't need to cast. Yeah, let's go ahead and kill him, though. Look at that. 13 damage out of nowhere. All right, let's try to get this guy in game three, because there is lethal in this one. Uh, again, I like our sideboard plan. I think that we need to... Uh, now, it's interesting knowing he has Shattering Spirits. I won't... You can't board out Aether Vile against him, but... Um, you know, it's good to know. And I don't think we want the third Spell Skite. It just gets blown out by too many things. Now, I mean, maybe it's better than the Sedge Livers. Like I said, the Sedge Livers are pretty... Um, this just, these games seem like they're going to come down to races, so... I mean, maybe it is. It's not a sliver, though. I mean, I don't think it is. We're just going to go ahead and... We're going to go with this. I mean, Shattering Spree is so good if we, you know, go Aether Vial into Spell Skite or something, and he just kills two of them, so... I think I'd rather just roll with what we have here. Hmm... This hand's got to be a mulligan. I don't feel like you have to mulligan very many hands with this deck. This is one of them, though. This hand doesn't do anything except cast a Warping Whale. Which, while not bad, is probably not quite good enough. Oh, okay. So we're going to keep going. <laughs> uh, I guess we have to keep this and try to find a land. I mean, we're... Obviously, this hand's bad and it's a big risk, but it's three lords and a mute vault. Maybe we'll beat them down. Um, I don't think we're winning going to four. So, it's magic. Alright, let's see what we get here. Yep, makes sense, makes sense. Um, okay. Well, we have one more draw step. We gotta see three cards to try to find a green source. So... On a mulligan to five already, I don't know that we could have expected to do much better on the mold of four, and the mold of six obviously had to be mold, and I mean, he's revealed an ancient grudge, okay. I mean, the mulligan from seven seemed fine, like, a hand had no pressure. Well, guess we should have played Mute Vault first, I thought about it. Um, I was trying to figure out if, if, if getting an attack in on turn two would be more important than... Um, if we drew if we drew a land that did not cast Predatory Sliver or would also come to play tapped, but I think it was right to do this, so we actually have access to some colored mana. Of course, our opponent blind flipped Delver, so that makes sense. I think we're pretty dead here, undone by the Shuffler and the RNG. It's a card we can cast. Let's just give it a shot. I'm sure it won't get countered. No way he has a counter spell with three open mana in a Delver deck. We know one of his cards is an Ancient Grudge, so it doesn't do anything. It did resolve. That's something. Of course, he may just be bolting it at the end of the turn here. As usual, the, the Delver game comes down to the Delver um, and whether or not it flipped because they always Delver games always come down to a race and when you flip your Delver on the first turn, uh, <laughs> you're usually doing pretty good on the play. I don't think our... Uh, he didn't kill our Diffusion Sliver, but we are getting very beat down. Okay. 
Yeah, let's see what we can do here. He's got a fourth land. Okay, Silver Hive. We're, now we're talking again. All right, let's go ahead and uh, try the... I'm going to just go ahead and... We can only play one of these, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and... I kind of want to play the Mana Weft Sliver, to be honest. And then try to spam them out next turn and attack for a bunch of turn after that. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe we just play Predatory Sliver this turn. Attack with it and Vault, Yeah. And then we'll attack next turn. We'll do the same thing, except we have another sliver that gets to throw throw down. Okay, well, our slivers. I'm surprised they're resolving, but they are protected from the lightning bolts because of the diffusion sliver. So it makes him pay two more. I mean, he has enough to bolt something, but he may decide he just wants to bolt our face instead. Uh, he's vapor snagging our our muta vault, and we already played silver high this turn. I mean, okay, I guess it could have been worse. We get in there for some damage. We still get a we get to repeat our turn next repeat that turn next turn. Um, we'll fall to seven from the attack here. So we'll see what he wants to do. He's got five cards of four mana, one of which is a dead Ancient Grudge. So that's why I really don't like boarding in Ancient Grudge against uh, Aether Vile decks. Because if they, in this case, it makes more sense because he saw Spellskite. But you board in your Artifact Hate, say against Merfolk, where all they have is the Ancient Grudge, or the, the, the Aether Vile. And if the deck can obviously win without Aether Vile, and their cards still require answers. And if you draw your, your Ancient Grudge or your, you know, your uh, Shattering spree or anything like that and destructive revelry and they don't ever play an aether and you don't ever give them a target then they've mulligan to six you know they, they're automatically taking a mulligan based on that card you know now it's also true that sometimes you get free wins when they uh you know when they have the the one land vile games but in general i just don't like it especially in decks like this Delver deck or something like that, where you really need, you know, you're trying to race and you need all of your cards to do things. Uh, I'm not a fan of playing the situational stuff from a card that doesn't even beat you if they have it. Teamer Battle Rage. I guess we take six. What is that? Is he going to play Become Immense? He can play Become a. Oh my god. Just kidding, we could never win that game. We just took 18. <laughs> Alright, alright then. That's fair enough, I guess. Not much you can do about that one. Now we see why he was Teamer Colors for the Become Immense combo, so that was pretty good. Fair enough. Would have liked to have seen what happened if we uh, didn't have to mulligan all the way down to Oblivion there in the third game, but that was still a good match.